Back in June, I posted a video showing that the top Muslim YouTube channel, Merciful Servant, was lying to viewers and claiming that Muhammad is the God of the Bible. Since the Merciful Servant channel is about to reach 3 million subscribers, this seems like a good time for a quick update on the channel's deification of Muhammad. In case you missed the video back in June, I'll give a quick recap. Surah 7, verse 157 of the Quran claims that the Torah and the Gospel contain prophecies about Muhammad. Muslims have had 14 centuries to find these prophecies, but the Bible passages that they point to as prophecies of Muhammad only work if no one bothers to actually read the passages. So Muslims will go around telling people that Deuteronomy 18.18 18 is a prophecy about Muhammad. It says that God is going to send a prophet like Moses. This must be Muhammad. Eventually, someone reads Deuteronomy 18.20, same passage, just two verses later, which declares that Muhammad can't possibly be a true prophet. Muslims will go around telling people that John 14, 16 is a prophecy about Muhammad. It says that someone is coming after Jesus. This must be Muhammad. Eventually, someone reads the entire passage and points out that John 14, 16 is about the Holy Spirit and that by claiming that the passage is about Muhammad, Muslims are calling Muhammad the Holy Spirit, thus deifying Muhammad and committing shirk. So Muslim apologists, in order to defend what the Quran says, have to keep switching passages. They find a passage and claim it's about Muhammad until people actually read it. Then Muslim apologists move on to another passage. One of the latest so-called biblical prophecies of Muhammad is Isaiah chapter 42. But as usual, in order to make this passage sound like it's about Muhammad, Muslims have to get pretty creative. And by creative, I mean creative with the truth. And by creative with the truth, I mean outright deceptive. Here's a clip from the video I posted back in June. The prophecy that supposedly proves that Muhammad is a true prophet is found in chapter 42 of the book of the prophet Isaiah. The narrator of the video tells us that this is a prophecy about a very special person. God starts the chapter by drawing our attention to a very special person that he will send. He describes this person as my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. According to Merciful Servant, verse 13 tells us that this special person will be a warrior. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Merciful Servant then tells his viewers that verse 13 is clearly a prophecy about Muhammad and not about Jesus. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By comparison, Jesus did not triumph over his enemies. According to Christians, he was crucified by them. Moreover, Jesus wasn't interested in fighting. He was not a man of war. He was a pacifist, according to the Bible. He said such things as, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. And, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight? Muslims in the comments section praised Allah for such a clear proof that Muhammad was a true prophet. Are the rest of you convinced yet? You know, when someone's making an argument about something that could affect your entire life and your eternal destiny, it's always a good idea to carefully examine the argument. And when it's a Muslim apologist making the argument, you really really need to take a closer look because some of these guys will do just about anything to convince you that Muhammad was a prophet. Notice something peculiar about this graphic of Isaiah 42 13. According to Merciful Servant, the verse is about the special person who would be a warrior for God. But the subject has been removed and replaced with an ellipsis, the dot dot dot. You use an ellipsis when you intentionally omit some content. 
Normally, you omit this content because it's irrelevant to the point you're making. But you should never use an ellipsis to completely change the meaning of the text. If Merciful Servant is being truthful with his viewers, then when we go to the actual verse to see what's been removed, we're going to find that the subject is this special person who will somehow turn out to be Muhammad. However, if the subject of the verse is someone else entirely, and Merciful Servant deliberately removed the name in order to completely distort the meaning of the text, we can only conclude that he is attempting to deceive his viewers because he knows that they won't bother to fact check anything he's saying. Let's see what the verse actually says. I'll use the same translation that Merciful Servant uses. Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Um, who goes forth as a mighty man? A special person who turns out to be Muhammad? No, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. Lord here is in all caps. When you're reading the Old Testament and you see Lord in all caps, the Hebrew word for Lord there is Yahweh. Yahweh is the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator of the universe. Yahweh is the God of the Bible. So, what did Merciful Servant do in this video? He went to a verse that's about Yahweh. He took Yahweh out of the verse and replaced Yahweh with dot dot dot. Then he told his viewers, who trust him to always tell them the truth, that this verse is about the special person that God would send as a prophet. It's about Muhammad. You have to be a special kind of dishonest to do something like this. So, Muslim apologists are so desperate to find Muhammad in the Bible that they will gladly, shamelessly, take verses that are clearly and indisputably about God and claim that they're about Muhammad. Whoever made the video about Isaiah 42 deliberately lied. Someone read verse 13, saw that it was about God, removed God from the verse, and then claimed that the verse is about Muhammad. Someone did that. That person is a deceiver and a mushrik, someone who commits shirk. If he had had an ounce of integrity, he would have removed the video and issued a public apology. Instead, the video is still on the channel. It hasn't been corrected. It's still misleading people. It's still calling Muhammad the God of the Bible. So, Merciful Servant is fully aware that a video on his channel contains lies and that it deifies Muhammad, and yet he keeps the video where it is. When we talk about Muslims lying to support their religion, we're not talking about random Muslims. This goes up to their most popular apologists and their most popular channels. Why do Islam's most popular speakers and channels lie for their religion? Channels like Merciful Servant obviously know that they can count on and depend on the ignorance and gullibility of their viewers. If they were worried about their own viewers calling them out and leaving their channel over the lies and the blasphemy, they would take down videos that contain lies and blasphemy. They leave these videos up because they know, they know their viewers do not care. As long as you're promoting Islam, you can get away with pretty much anything in the eyes of many Muslims. Finally, channels like Merciful Servant don't care that we know that they're lying. People filled the comments section saying, your video contains lies. Merciful Servant does not care. As long as the video continues deceiving people for the sake of Allah, 
Who cares that it's filled with lies? And who cares that unbelievers know that it's filled with lies? One thing to keep in mind is that this is not an isolated incident. Islam has been deifying Muhammad for 14 centuries. It sure is going to be fun exposing Islam's idolatrous pagan worship of history's most obvious false prophet. If you'd like to join me for the ride, be sure to subscribe, terrorize that like button, and share this video until Muslim apologists are shamed into admitting the truth about their man-centered religion.